I've, al I've always liked making. I'm a maker, full stop. And I guess part of that is because I'm used to coming up with something from nothing, so nothingness is normal to me. And therefore, moving into a space or an arena uh, from the perspective of, of a fresh idea and then trying to create it and going through the experiment and the process of getting to that end result. So I guess in some ways visual arts and being a maker has helped me a great deal in trying to understand why I'm doing what I'm doing, especially with the uh, Say No to Burka campaign, you could say. Because just because some people haven't done it, just because it's not mainstream, or just because some people think that it's inappropriate to challenge a, a, a religious ideology, well, to me, it's just like everything else I do. We'll start from nothing and we'll see where we go and uh, let's see if we can come up with something through a pro process of critique, not destructive, not a destructive process, but a constructive process, uh, an end result of seeing what is appropriate for Australia and the Australian people and that we don't need to just accept everything that is thrown at us. We just don't need to. A mate of mine who's a fashion designer and a very important character of the street and uh, one of our flamboyant uh, screaming queens. He wanted to use burkas in a fashion parade, part of the Fringe Festival in 2010. He talked about it a little bit too much and it got back to him that if he did use burkas in the show, that his shop would actually be firebombed. And he actually censored himself via fear that he actually believed that these threats would become true. Back then I laughed it off again, thinking, no, oh, David, they're just intimidation, intimidating, all. it's the way they operate, you know, intimidation, intimidation, we have to fall into line. But he did scare himself out of it, and that consequently led me to putting the stickers on my four-wheel drive saying, Australians have nothing to hide, say no to burkas. The, the fastest and the most immediate way of showing a bit of protest was actually putting the stickers on the car that literally Australians have nothing to hide. You know, we don't need to be covered up. And that we can, you know, the, the slogan developed from this, that we can say no to something. And uh, it started from the front and back of the car and then I added the side of the car when there was enough, well, it became very obvious very quickly that there was a lot of support for this driving around. My parents came from a generation uh, after the Second World War and both of them were like really young at, during the war and I think the war affected them quite uh, well realistically that their values of religion uh, which well not so much challenged but they were aware of a lot of the hypocrisies of man-made religions so basically as I was a child and raised, they didn't try to deny me the concept of religion, but they basically made sure that I understood all religions and tried to understand the concept of religions and how they're interpreted by man. Went to college and I had a group of man-hating lesbians that wanted to spend four years of their lives trying to cut my nuts off. And that was the first time I really experienced uh, anger from other generations of Australians for things that were done by other people to them or society. Uh, and I had to get through that.
that survival uh, mode. And that, that was interesting. All us people were there, quite individual, but then within three months everyone was pierced and wearing black. And so I found myself still being slightly out of that because while well, I didn't mind the colour black, Italians always look good in black, uh, it was a scenario that the piercings and the tats and that, that whole uh, subculture of the visual arts wasn't something that I just, you know, identified with as a, a persona or as a visual image. I've always been an individual and I don't need to fit into the, the normal criteria in the sense that, you know, I'm from an ethnic background so I have to act like a wog. I think anyone that comes to Australia has to accept that they're coming into a multiracial country, that where we are made up of many, many faces and that in general Australians don't have any issues about what someone looks like or where they've come from. There's just too many of us now in the country that have come from somewhere else or have parents or grandparents or great-grandparents that have got that mix to then be negative towards someone that's freshly off the boat or a plane. But I think what is upsetting people is that the fact for the last 30 years that we've been allowing minority groups to run wild and to start demanding more from the host country, being Australia in our case, than is appropriate. We've encouraged, through the stupidity of multiculturalism, uh, cultural pluralism to take hold that in the case of Islam and Muslims in Australia, they've made use of that, taken advantage of that, and now are creating enclaves that are definitely not in sync with the rest of the community. If you don't take your helmet off going into a bank, you could be perceived as being a bank robber. Why? Because it's happened in the past. The other side of it is most of us respect the idea of being able to communicate looking at someone's face. And in general, even my generation, is that if you're having a sincere conversation, you even take your sunglasses off and make eye contact. I knew quite well that it's very difficult for someone who's Muslim to fit into any society in truth because sooner or later if there's enough people that want to, to instigate Islam in its most common form, it actually then clashes with the host society, full stop. It's, it's been proven through history and it just doesn't work. All my life I've always done things creatively and creating work that didn't need to fit into normal realms of uh, artwork. I don't try to, to work on the fact that Sidonia or myself are famous now, today or even 10 years ago. It's more the fact of will the work that I've done have anything to, to say about our culture and possibly in 50 years time or 100 years time.